Welcome back to the Tour of Heroes Angular application. Uh, where we've left off is we've just added the services, so we're up to section 5 now. And so far the application looks something like this, where we have uh, a list of heroes, and if we click on a particular hero, it adds it to the list with its ID, and it also outputs it here, and there's an input and there's a binding as well, two-way binding, so you notice if you make a change here, it changes the variable elsewhere. And what we want to achieve is some routing, so that is essentially this right part of the page here. Um, and we want to make that on the second tab, that'll be the Heroes tab, but there'll also be a first option dashboard in the navigation, and that will show us a few heroes like this, and that's sort of essentially how the application is going to work. So, uh, when it comes to routing, it's good practice to add a separate uh, module that takes care of that. So let's go ahead and generate a module using the Angular CLI. And note that these uh, flags here with the dash dash flap um, that just make sure that the um, it, the module doesn't go in its own um, uh, folder or the app routing up on its own folder it will go on the um, top level inside the source application and the dash dash module uh, equal app that lets the CLI um, to register it in the imports array of the app module and we'll see that in a moment so let's just go ahead and copy this and we'll type that in there so ng generate module app routing so we'll just close a few things so we can see it in action close all these tabs as well so as you can see we in the top level of the source application we now have this app routing module and we've seen uh, an app module this is where all our uh, modules sort of come in and it automatically put this app routing module in here and you know did the imports um, which is the starting point of the entire application uh, and that references this other module along with other modules that it's like forms module we added earlier uh, so yeah it uses this app module decorator um, imports the common module now we may not actually need the common module in this case because we're not dealing, we're just dealing with the routing, it's not like a module, like a um, authorization section or some particular view or something like that, it's just, just routing, so I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get rid of that. Okay, so it generated this, yep. Uh, replace it with the following. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and do that. And just note that the heroes component because uh, we added a the components um, folder go ahead and access it like that so that's the heroes component and yes we did delete the common module um, but what we did do is we imported this router module and routes from angular router I'll just go ahead and separate the angular 
libraries from the built-in one, built-in component. So let's have a look here. So the app routing module imports the router module and routes, yep. So the app can have the routing functionality. We also import the heroes component because we need somewhere to, for the router to go. And a common module references uh, have been removed because uh, they're no longer part of the module. And then we get into explaining the uh, what the code actually is meaning. So this uh, constant route, that's of the type routes, uh, and that is sort of an array of objects. And in this case, we've just got one object, so we just got one path. Um, so we got the path heroes, and that references the component, the heroes component. So when we act, go to the path heroes, this should display the heroes component. Um, but it won't just yet. <coughs> so yeah, a path is the string that matches the URL in the browser. So in the URL bar, we'll have slash heroes at the end of the website. And that will reroute to here after we do some more routing configuration. Yep, so localhost 4200 heroes. Now the router module dot for root. Uh, so what this does is it sort of uh, it imports oh, it imports it into the home module oh, into the uh, application at routing module um, and it configures the routes in one step uh, with by calling the router module dot for root. So this is like for root, I sort of think of it as uh, that, that, uh, the app module. So in a way, we're configuring these routes, which we've defined in here with routes uh, for the root. So for localhost uh, semicolon uh, colon 4200, from there, that's where we are both importing, oh well that's where we're importing the router module, uh, so we can access it there from the root, and we can export the router module so we can use it globally across the application. So one thing that we will have to do is we'll have to open the app component template and now that we have um, this component here, what we need to do is we need to render that component in a, somewhere in our application. So we're going to do that in the app.component HTML file. We're going to have a look here. So previously we've done this app-heroes uh, selector. And that was the um, the heroes template that we created before. But now that we have access to the heroes component through the routing, we have to add this special uh, router outlet, and that essentially outputs all the routes. Oh, not all the routes. It outputs the route that we're on in in the application. So we should be able to see this in action. And okay, so right now our heroes section is gone. But if we go and navigate to heroes, uh, we once again, we get that. Okay, that's good. Obviously we don't want to explicitly type in the URL. It would be nice if we had a navigation link and that's indeed the next step. So we can have a navigation bar in the app component. And so right above this router outlet, meaning that the navigation and the H1 will show on any of the pages. 
So all that messages, by the way. We use this special A tag, and rather than using a href, we use this Angular sort of router link notation. And router link, what it will do in this case with this uh, forward slash here, it will just be uh, sort of to whatever page we're on slash heroes. So since we can only be on the home page, we can sort of see now we got this. If we go back to here, we still have this heroes navigation, and we can click on that, and then that will do the routing, which will display the component via the router outlet in the uh, app component. So that's cool. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll just copy the uh, CSS for the app component. And that will give us some nice styling. this uh, little badge thing around our heroes and while we're here we may as well oh no we'll create this uh, we'll create these later on so let's just go back to where we were okay so adding a dashboard view so we'll add that dashboard view we can do this. Recall that we have a components folder, so I'll just prefix this with components slash, and this will make a component. So let's go ahead and open up that TypeScript and HTML files. Okay, so let's just copy and paste this HTML in, and we'll get the uh, TypeScript as well. So we'll copy that. Oops, copy that into the TypeScript. Okay. Okay. So once again, we got this. Uh, Directory, so the interfaces is back to and in hero, and I think the hero service is also back to and in services uh, slash hero service. And we can also go ahead and copy the CSS so we don't have to think about the CSS. That's cool. So let's just take a look, we can close that now. Um, so we've got a div with some classes that we just added. We've got an ng4 angular directive, so it will loop through each of the heroes and it will display the hero name. So we've seen this before where we sort of, you know, we've got the hero interface, we've got the hero service, so we can access that data globally throughout our application. And we've got this app dashboard selector, which we'll need to put somewhere. <coughs> so we define heroes as an empty array of the type hero. Um, and then we've got this get heroes function, which is exactly the same as the previous video with the service. Um, so it's an observable, thus we need to subscribe to it and then all the hero's data um, can get set to the property. In this case where it looks like we're slicing one to five, so I'm pretty sure that uh, means that we're only gonna see uh, five, like one, two, three, four, five, uh, rather than all of the heroes. And then on the 
energy on a nip. We'll uh, call that method. I just got to check up on that. Um, all right, so that's that. Okay, so that explains that. Oh, okay, here's an explanation of it. This get heroes returns the slice list of heroes at positions one and five, returning only four of the top heroes. Oh, okay, so it doesn't include the first one, I guess. Um, but it has the second, third, fourth, and fifth. Okay, so let's add that dashboard component to the app routing module. Do that here and go inside of the components dashboard uh, folder. And oh, yes, yeah, so we'll need to add that part using the selector with the routing. We are doing it like this. So that means we'll need to add another link in the dashboard. And okay, I guess it's good practice to have a default default route. Um, you could also have a 404 or something like that. But if the path is undefined, or, uh, well, blank, it's going to redirect immediately to the dashboard. A route redirects the URL that fully matches the empty path to the route whose path is slash dashboard. Okay, so not any link, but exactly matches that. So that's when you just go to the website, essentially. So now we'll add the dashboard link to the shell. Okay, that's cool. So in the app component, and we'll save that. In the app component, just above that, we can do the A tag with the router link dashboard. And now, okay, that's cool. We've got the dashboard, we've got the heroes. Um, and it even displays that for us like that. So that was that code we copied. Um, so let hero of heroes, it adds that uh, sort of uh, block for each hero. It also adds the classes and all that with the hero name presented, so that's cool. So let's keep going. Oh, okay, so we can just click on this and this. If you want, we can clear it. That also clears it over here. And if we select one again, that will be selected like that. So navigating to the hero details. Okay, so by clicking on a hero in the dashboard, so one of these, um, or by clicking a hero in the heroes list, which is here, or by pasting a deep link URL into the browser address bar that identifies the hero to display. Um, okay, so I guess the first thing to do is to delete hero details from the heroes component. Okay, so we'll just got to enable the hero, uh, enable routing in the hero detail component. So let's add the hero detail route. So let's go ahead and import that into the app routing module. <coughs> let's just order these dashboard heroes component, heroes details component, and that is. Components, uh, I believe. Components. Oh, okay. Components. Components. And then we're going to need another one of these. So we got heroes, and then the other path is going to be detail. So we'll put that. Here. 
here and this uh, colon ID that's sort of um, like it could be a variable so that could be ID 1, it could be ID 2, it could be ID 3 so we can prefix um, that particular or make it a variable rather than a word per se um, with that sort of notation there and then they'll link to the hero detail component okay so let's save that so yeah the colon in the path indicates that the ID is a placeholder for a specific hero ID at this point all application routes are in place okay that's cool okay so now we got that let's go to the dashboard component and we'll copy that HTML in for the hero links so we can just go ahead and copy that it in like that. Uh, is that right? Hero name. Sorry. Let me just copy that like that and see what the difference is. So the A tag ends there, the div ends there. Okay, so that's all good to put in there. All we did was we changed the router link. Um, or we added a router link to the A tag such that each hero has it goes to a particular hero ID um, which we set up in the here so for that ID you'll go to the hero's detail component um, so heroes component dot HTML so let's go ahead and go to the heroes component. We'll do control P uh, heroes. Oh, let's just look it through here. Heroes component. Oh, it's the HTML. So what are we doing here? Uh, the hero items in the heroes component are li elements whose click events are bounded to the components on select method. Strip. Oh, is that what's currently in place? UL class heroes ng4 on select. Oh, okay, that's what's currently in place. Uh, we want to strip the LI back to just its NG4 and then wrap the badge and name in an anchor element. So we've got this A anchor element so we can put the router link on it for the particular hero. For each particular hero there'll be a link to that uh, detail page for that ID and then there'll be that badge linked around it. Okay that's cool. So that UL section there can be changed to this. And then remove dead code. Okay, so what's dead? Uh, the heroes component TypeScript. Oh, okay. So let's just copy this. just take a look and compare it for a second so what's different uh, selected hero is no longer there and we just have get heroes so there's no on select uh, okay so let's just go ahead and delete the on select just replace that whole class like that So let's have a look. What are we working with at the moment? So we can navigate, and if we click on a particular uh, person from the dashboard, it will navigate to that person's ID, uh, and it's just displaying uh, messages at the moment. It'd probably be ideal if we. Hello. 
display the corresponding data with that. So in the hero detail component, we can add the following imports. Oh, okay, so firstly we will um, have the activated route so we can know which route we're on. So the hero detail component, hero detail component, it's going to have some imports here. To our services to get the hero service. Okay. So yeah, this activated route and location has to do with um, their their services that we can inject into our constructor. So we'll do that first, and then we'll explain what they do. So private route for activated route, private hero service for the hero service, private location for that. We can save that, and that has no longer grayed out our unused uh, services. But we still need to use them. So the activated route holds information about the route to this instance of the hero detail component. Okay. So what is the hero detail component again? This is uh, the name in uppercase with the binding. Okay, so we can't see that at the moment. If we click on something, oh, okay, we still can't see it at the moment. That's what we're sort of in the middle of changing, I suppose. Um, the hero service gets the hero data from the remote server that was simulated, and this component will use it to get the hero to display. And the location is an Angular service for interacting with the browser. We'll use it later to navigate to the view that navigated here. Okay. So, okay, this is something. Extract the ID route parameter. So in the hero detail component, where this ng on init is, let's just change that. Uh, let's see here, hero service, why? So I'm just going to close a few things up. Uh, we can close that, that, uh, leave that open. Uh, and the dashboard component. Uh, okay, so the hero detail component isn't getting get hero. Uh, so let's just take a look at our service just to make sure that it's called get hero. So we'll go to our hero service. And it's called Get Heroes. So let's go ahead. Although that doesn't take an idea. Okay, so perhaps we need to create another method in our hero service um, to allow that. And yes, we do. So let's create that. That will be good. And we can call this uh, this. Dot heroes. So when we save that, this should no longer error in here. Okay, so let's take a look at what this get hero does. So the hero service has this get hero method, which takes an ID of the type number. And okay, so we want to return a hero, but an observable of the type hero. So recall a hero is just an object with an ID. Uh, and a name so we want to return an observable of that so we can subscribe to it elsewhere out, out of the service so um, we're also adding a message here send the message after fetching the hero okay I guess it's not technically after but okay 
uh, hero service fetched hero ID and it tells you the particular ID that you've passed in here with this uh, template literal yeah, six syntax with the back ticks and you know, dollar sign curly brackets um, so that's going to add that message to the log of messages and return the observable and I guess <coughs> oh, okay so we're using this sort of uh, functional programming sort of technique uh, with this new sort of find method uh, so it takes the see here oh, okay so it, for the ID that gets passed in so we're gonna call this get hero method and let's say we have get hero where the URL is you know slash five we'll take that five which we need to still set up you'll log it and then so this heroes is relating to these heroes here. So let's say we pass an ID 11 for all of these um, heroes. We're finding a particular hero, and that just hero represents each one of these objects. Uh, so each corresponding ID and name. So let's say it's a, ID is 11. So what this uh, find method will do, it'll it'll go through each of these objects and it will try and see if the ID matches the ID that's passed to it. So say um, we're on the website and we call the get hero method so we go to a URL slash 12 for example what this get hero method is going to do is it's going to go through this list and it will go to the first object and it will say okay the ID 11 and that isn't equal to the ID of 12 but then when we get to the next object we get to the ID of 12 and that ID will match that particular hero so that's that's what we're gonna pass in so we found that particular hero um, yep so that's all good but we still need to set up the routing for that to happen. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I did. Oh no, we did that. Okay, so we did that over here in the hero detail component. Uh, so this get hero function, we're going to get the ID, and I think there's an explanation up here. Um, so we the route snapshot is a static image of the route information shortly after the component was created okay so we're getting the ID from the URL and this plus converts a string to a number because we need the ID as a number so you're getting the last bit of the slug from the URL um, which is automatically a string, but we convert it to a number because it will be a number. Um, and then this param map is a dictionary of route parameter values extracted from the URL. So recall we set this get ID, or we set this ID up in the app routing module. So whatever number they pass into here, that's what. Uh, this variable name has to be the same as that. So we take a look at this hero detail component and we're getting that ID. So we've clicked on a link, we're rerouted to that different page. So let's click on from Basto. Now we've gone to slash detail 13. We're getting that 13 from the URL when we you know get the hero. And then we're using this hero service that we created to get the hero ID. So we've got the ID 13 from the URL, we pass 13, we subscribe to that um, observable, and then for that data, for that hero data, which is going to be what we find, um, so in that case it's going to be 
this here, ID 13 name Bombasto. And for that bit of data, we're going to set this hero. So what's this hero? Our hero. Oh, okay. So that's relating to the input. Um, okay. And that's going to be set equal to hero, which is that bit of data there. Okay. Let's see. Oh, and then that uh, at the moment it's going to be on the ng on init lifecycle hook to get the hero. So every time that detail component hero detail component is created, it's going to get the hero. Okay. Let's see what else. The browser refreshes and the app crashes with compile error. Hello, hero service does doesn't have a get hero method, so we'll add that now. Oh no, we've done that. Um, like get heroes, get heroes. Okay, we need to re-implement it as a HTTP request. We'll do that later on. If you paste local host detail 11 in the browser address bar the router navigates to the detail view for the hero id dr nice so let's do that oh, okay so yeah we got this um component here the hero details the name the details the id dr nice and we can access that through this as well okay that's cool, let's just clear these messages. Clear these messages. Oh, okay, so we automatically do a message when we fetch it, but okay. Cool. Now what? We need to find a way back. So by clicking on the browser's back button, you can go back to the hero list, okay? Let's just uh, add that. And that's on the hero details component. Details component. Uh, let's just okay. Add it at the bottom of the component, I guess. Let me go back. Oops. And let's just add that method, the go back method, in the hero details component. So it returns nothing void. But okay, so now we're using the location service and there's a built-in back button so that's good that means if we click on narco for example we've got this go back button and the location is sort of saved in like the previous location is saved in uh, or the service takes care of where the previous location was so you can just uh, click go back here like that if you click on heroes uh, and then go back, it goes back to the dashboard. So uh, that may need to have some extra configuration if you don't want to go back to a certain page or something like that. And oh, that actually wraps up the add in app navigation. So we did a lot of um, routing and take a look at that application. We'll just refresh the whole thing from the home page and we've got a dashboard and a heroes uh, route so if we click on dashboard oh well, we automatically go to the dashboard because we rerouted to the dashboard uh, if we click on heroes we can see the heroes tab and go back go back to the dashboard clear these messages we can click on any of these it shows you the heroes details component with the id that's in the url uh, and we can change the name as well if we wanted to. Um, yeah, we can go back, click on heroes, click on it on. Oh, okay, so. Oh, no, 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 it does work. Routes there as well. All right. All right. So, in the next video, on the last one, we'll uh, be upgrading it to get that.
data from a server. 